Hello everyone, back to tuning in to today's second video, doing me CMWF Monday slash six weeks of get uh, for uh, the UK and the rest of Europe too uh, for today's uh, second video. It's going to take us into August, so I shall get on that for you in a moment. Just say that the first video today was our 6am upload, and we've got 10 to 14 there that will include all our rig features coming up to you later on this afternoon. So please like, share, subscribe on the video. Thank you so much everybody uh, for doing that, and I hope you're having a lovely Lovely Tuesday. Thanks so much for tuning in. Thanks to EastMDF.int for supplying us with the charts, as always. And we'll crack on with it then, shall we? So we're going to begin with the uh, week one mean sea level pressure anomaly for uh, Europe. It's going to take us from the 27th of uh, June to the 4th of July. So uh, this week we'll have low pressure to the northwest of Europe, around the UK and Ireland. High pressure we're seeing back into northern East Europe and Western Russia, and some lower pressure, which is mainly heat loads, really, down across the uh, Mediterranean. Upper air temperatures, no, we want to talk about um, 500 millibar heights anomalies. <laughs> Looking like this, with below average height, been a long day. Below average heights extending down. Western side of Europe, and a ridge of above average heights, higher pressure sitting to our east and northeast. A jet stream and wind flow is therefore going to be doing something a little bit like that. So, we're in a trough of low, and we expect it to be unsettled across the far west and north Europe, but most of Europe actually northern, central, east areas, and that big area of high pressure. And that's where the heat is going to be under that area of high pressure. So, temperature anomaly is looking like uh, this for uh, the uh, for this week, for the coming week, week we're in. Uh, so, very warm to your hearts across much of northern Europe. Scandinavia standing out as being really, really warm there. Temperature anomalies in both deep red colours, which is kind of 6 to 10 degrees uh, above average, maybe even a little bit more in some places, that heat extending down into parts of uh, uh, eastern Poland in particular, and then all the way down into the eastern part of Europe, so uh, around the Balkans, for example, looking very hot through there, and into the central part of the Italy, Corsica, Sardinia, looking pretty hot too. Further east of that, the far eastern part of the Med looks a little bit cooler, actually, around Turkey and Greece. It does look a little bit cooler through there. And then we come to the west of Europe, where it is cooler as well. So the UK, Ireland, France, Spain, Portugal, those areas are actually coming out slightly below average temperature. So a bit of a freeway split really going on here uh, in, in, in this week, with cooler weather in the far west and also in the far east and then in between uh, especially for northern europe looking uh, really hot uh, and the precipitation anomaly for uh, week one looking like that many areas of dry and normally have got a wetter swathe here through scandinavia and then down into germany and uh, uh, germany and, and like down towards the alps as well that's going to be the dividing line, of course, between the, the cooler air out west and the heat that's going to be to the east of, of that band of wet weather. Of course, that will encompass thunderstorms as well as it pushes on into that heat and humidity. Much of eastern, northeast Europe, those Baltic Sea areas looking uh, mainly drier than normal free bed. Also a little bit more unsettled for the UK and for Ireland, especially for more western areas. France is a little bit... Western average in the east, a bit drier than average out to west. And then into Mediterranean, most areas are looking drier than normal, as you expect, of course, at this time of the year. Right, that's week one done. Let's have a week two, which will be before for it to be 11th of July. So, a bit of a change here. We get uh, higher pressure then developing to our west, or sitting to uh, our west, uh, across the Atlantic, into parts of Ireland and uh, the UK. That allows lower pressure to begin to attack into the north and the northeast and run down the east side of Europe. So it looks like northern east Europe probably turning more unsettled as western Europe is beginning to turn dry and actually maybe starting to do something uh, a little bit like that. The 500 millibar height anomaly for week two uh, looks like this. So an area of above average heights again. Sitting over just to our west from uh, below average heights, low pressure into the far north of Europe with jet stream again probably doing something a bit like that. Temperature anomalies then for week two, four to the 11th of July look like that. Big difference actually, big cool down going on across much of northern and western Europe. So most Scandinavia is turning cold, cooler, 
Uh, much of Germany, even into Poland, where it was, where it, where it was, where it is very hot in week one. There it is much, much cooler as we get through into week two. At the same time, the heat's being pushed back further towards the far east and north east Europe, and particularly into western Russia, looking pretty hot through those areas. These parts of the mess still looking a little bit on the cool side. Nowhere near as hot through the Balkans around the Asiatic. Um, Italy, though, and the central part of the Med still looking quite hot, and beginning to be hotter through Spain and Portugal as well. A warm up being taking place there. France, though, still actually looks a little bit on the cooler side, especially through eastern parts of uh, France just here. And then we've got the UK and Ireland close to average uh, with temperatures there. Week 2 precipitation anomaly looks like that. It's going drier in the far west and northwest of Europe, so Ireland, UK. Many parts of France, even into the low country, Belgium, Holland, Netherlands, we can drive north through there. Denmark, maybe a little bit dry on average in the far south of Norway. And then the rest of Scandinavia and into those Baltic areas of Latvia, Estonia, Lithuania, uh, largely uh, wetter than normal through those areas. Eastern and far southeastern parts of Europe also have a swathe of wetter weather and then it turns drier as we come out into uh, parts of western and southwestern Europe. But the driest weather looks like it's in the Northwest of Europe, really, uh, next week. Right, week three. It's going to be the 11th to the 18th of July. And high pressure is in control then, ridging in from the Atlantic into much of Western Europe. There's some lower pressure just off the coast of Portugal. And there might be a bit of an upper level trough through here into the far northeast of uh, Europe as well. However, most areas are under that area of high pressure by looking at it. The 500 millibar high tsunami looks like that. So, above average heights still anchored to much of West Europe and the North Atlantic. Probably some lower pressure through there, I would have thought. They're going to reach over in the far east, southeast, and into the west of Russia. Week 3, uh, temperature anomaly. Looks like that's becoming warmer in the west. So, uh, Ireland, parts of England, Wales in particular, and down into France, Spain, Portugal. Uh, temperatures are getting hotter through there. The central part of the Med also coming a little bit hotter too. Same time, uh, southeastern, eastern parts of the Med looking a little bit cooler. And also into parts of Scandinavia, looks like it's turning a bit cooler through there. Otherwise, there'll be a big swathe of uh, average or no signal, really from eastern France, right way over towards the uh, Black Sea. I suspect those areas, especially further east, might be a little bit on the cool side, actually. And the week three precipitation anomaly still looking very dry across much western northwest Europe under that area of high pressure. So uh, the UK, Ireland, many parts of Germany, Denmark into southern uh, Norway and also uh, the Low Countries and northern parts of, uh, of France looking dry than normal uh, through those areas. Probably a bit drier through Portugal and Spain as well. Um, and then the far northeast of Europe looks a little bit wetter though, so far north Scandinavia into those Baltic Sea areas of northwest Russia, so it turns a bit wetter through there. And in the far southern uh, part of the Mediterranean it looks like it's turning a bit wetter too. Week 4 will be the 18th, 25th of July. Weakening signals now. High pressure looks like it's in over Scandinavia, some low pressure in the North Atlantic and probably down. Across southern Europe again, it's mainly going to be heat low, though. Otherwise, there's not all that much, obviously, not all that much to work on. Week 4, 500 millibar heights on, looks like that's above average heights building towards Scandinavia. Again, otherwise, not much of a signal, though, in most parts of uh, Europe. Looks like it might get a bit of scanty high going, though. Uh, the temperature on is warming up, though. Many areas are becoming warmer than average, hotter than average, right way from west all the way over to the east. So it looks like there's a warm-up on the cards there as we get into the second half of July. Maybe it's only going to the hottest part of the sun. I'm not sure about that. And whilst a relatively weak ceiling, it also looks like many parts of Europe are actually drier than average or hinted to be drier than average uh, anyway. There's certainly more sandy brown, which is dry, uh, compared to green, which is uh, wet, so it looks like perhaps getting hotter and drier into the second half of July. Right, that's the forty. Yeah, that's the um, what I'm talking about. It's a thirty-day slash four-week uh, forecast done. Let's just extend out to weeks five and six before we go, because why not? So this is a week five means sea level pressure anomaly down towards lower pressure then. Some lower pressure in the North Atlantic. Some lower pressure. Across southern southwestern parts of Europe too. The 500 millibar high tonic week 5. Um, really weak signal, but it may be hinting at some higher pressure still across northern 
parts of Europe anyway, but it is a weak signal. The uh, temperature anomaly, again, looks pretty warm, or maybe quite hot there as we go to the final week of July. Look at that, but those temperatures really across all parts of Europe, right way from the west, all the way over to the east, maybe just Portugal, a little bit cooler. Um, but it does look pretty hot, I have to say, the second half of July could be shaping up to be properly hot here. And um, the precipitation on week five, it's largely driving over, especially through the southern, western, southwest. Now, maybe just things are going a little bit more unsettled towards the far northwest, but it's a very, very weak signal. And then lastly, week six will be the first through to the 8th of August, so it's looking. Uh, so, some lower pressure across many parts of Europe, especially the south and southwest. The 500 millibar height anomaly looks like that, hinting at some above average heights still sitting over northern Europe, though. Temperature anomaly still looks pretty hot across most parts of Europe into the first week of August. We could be in for a two or three week heat wave here, late July, early August. And finally, precipitation anomaly is largely drier than uh, normal. So let's maintain the trend from Friday when we looked at this model, which, uh, you know, on Friday's update, or Saturday's update, but the model update on Friday, um, on Saturday's update uh, video, uh, it uh, was quite apparent that um, the second half of July to early August could be setting up a bit of a heatwave type pattern, and the ECM Death Exchange has maintained that. Uh, for this update as well. So it's beyond the 30-day forecast period, but it is of interest that late July, early August might turn uh, hot and dry across many parts of Europe. Before that was a little bit changeable in uh, the weekend, but the trend through July looks like it's towards higher pressure and drier warm weather, especially from the middle of the month onwards. Before that, it's a little bit more changeable. Right, so that's it for your uh, 30 day ECM Death extended book for this week. We'll do it all over again next week. Remember, any forecast beyond five, seven days comes with uh, big health warnings and large pieces of start attached. So it's just a snapshot. Could look completely different. We'll look at this model again with a UK and Ireland focus uh, on Friday or probably more likely on Saturday. We're going to be back later on 10 to 14 today. That will include all of the all operate features so come back for that then but for this video that's all for now and thank you so much for watching